I came to the conclusion that the lighting I had was trash. We bought quite a few corals. Everything you're about to see is based on my experience, and my experience thus far is about zero. For $80, these lights look pretty good, I'd say. We just arrived at the Frag Swap. We've never been to one of these before. This is in Dayton, Ohio. We bought a cooler on the way, so in case we find anything, we have somewhere to put it on the way home. Is that a groundhog? Uh, anyway, so we're about to go inside and see what they have. We bought quite a few corals. We kind of planned on getting like maybe one or two things. And as you can see, we bought more than one or two things. There was really no way to know how many of the vendors setting up today were gonna have like the $5 and $10 corals. But there was like at least two or three vendors that had like buy three, get one free, $5, $10 corals. There really wasn't that many people there. There were quite a few vendors, but the building was like maybe half full. So we do have to make one more stop. I don't have a coral dip. So we're gonna have to go to the local fish store and pick up some dip. But first, before that, it is lunchtime and coral shopping. It's very hard work. So we stopped to get some lunch. Let's do that first and then to the fish store. Guami penis. That's definitely what that says. We are back. Look at all these awesome corals we've got. If you can't tell, in front of me are nine corals and one anemone. I just prepped all this to dip the corals to try to make sure there's nothing on them. This is by no means a how-to video. Everything you're about to see is based on my experience and my experience thus far is about zero. So this is what I've read, this is what I've watched and what I'm gonna attempt to do is dip these and if I don't see anything come off of them, I'm gonna go straight into, you know, once they're dipped, acclimating and then putting them in the tank. If I see anything come off, any kind of pest whatsoever, then I'm gonna think about quarantining them. I don't wanna kill these in quarantine. It's one thing to keep corals alive in your main tank. It's another thing to set up a quarantine tank and try to keep animals alive in a tank that's not established and you know doesn't have its microfauna. So hopefully we don't get any pests off. I mean, hopefully if there are pests, we get them off, but hopefully there aren't any, so they don't have to quarantine. I know that there's certain types of dips you can use for certain corals and not others. My local fish store had a few dips. This was really the only one I could find anything online about. Um, some people said it wasn't quite strong enough. The other two that I found there didn't really have anything online about them. So I went with this one because I didn't really hear of it causing any problems. The directions for this dip is four capfuls for one gallon of water. So I got exactly one gallon of water from my display tank, or from the main system. It's going to go in here with the power head. We're going to mix this up, put the corals in, dip them for, it says, a few minutes to at most 15 minutes. We're gonna use a little pipette to blow on them. I've got a little toothbrush. We're gonna scrub the frag plugs. I have a freshwater dip that I have temperature acclimating to the same temperature as everything else. We've got the dip mixture. We're going to do a freshwater dip and then rinsing in salt water. This dip apparently works for all the corals and the anemone. So we're gonna put everything in this tank and uh, yeah, let's get to dipping. This is the first time, a little nervous. Let's go. I can't wait to show you guys what these look like, but you really won't be able to see right now because they're, they're all closed up. Get the power head on. I know certain dips you're supposed to use gloves for. I'm not sure about this one, so I'll just go ahead and put on some gloves. 
just in case. Plus, if there's any like bristle worms on these, or certain worms you would not want touching your skin, this can this can help you with that too. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna set a timer so that I do not forget when I put them in. These are all apparently really easy corals. I picked ones that are either easy or they were really cheap. I can't freaking get it off the plastic. <laughs> Seriously, I can't get this guy off the plastic. Oh, they're like so good at holding on. We'll dip him in here since he is trying to just fly around. Definitely not easy to see into. So now I'm gonna take him out sort of in the order that I put them in. Really swish them off, do fresh water. Salt water dip, and then this is the water I just took out of the display tank. First thing I see an Asterina starfish. Do you see one thing in here? But I don't know if that's a thing or if it's just, I don't know. That could be a copepod, I guess. It has been four days since we've been to the frag swap, put the corals in the tank, and most of them are doing pretty well. The soft corals are definitely doing better than the hard corals. But well, I did some more testing on my water with the API saltwater test kit that I had. My nutrients are low enough that I can't read anything on that test kit, so I'm gonna have to buy either digital or uh, salifert test kits apparently can read pretty low. Um, so I'm probably gonna get a set of those, nitrate, phosphate, uh, calcium, alkalinity, and we'll make sure the water is perfect so these corals have nothing to worry about and they can start growing out of control. I came to the conclusion, the realization, that the lighting I had was trash. This is the old lighting on the one side. This is actually both sides of lights on one side now because I moved them to test out a light that I bought. I knew the lights that I had in this tank were just not gonna work. They were like standard lights you buy on a PetSmart Petco tank, like the little LED strips. Definitely not bright enough. Like tallest point in the tank was like maybe 10, 15 par, very dark. So I knew we had to get some better lights. So the options are expensive lights or budget lights. Since money's a little tight right now, I didn't go with the uh, expensive lights. Makes sense. So budget lights, we're talking like two AI primes. That's still like at least probably 500 bucks with tax. They're like 250, something like that. And that still wouldn't be bright enough. You have like AI uh, Hydras or 64s uh, with the four pucks and stuff. That's better. Now we're gonna be like 600 to 1,000 bucks. Still a little bit more than budget. So then we're looking at black box lights. BRS did a review talking about like the top three black box lights. Definitely would check out that video if you haven't seen it already. I went with Will's uh, the long light, whatever the long light shape was. I'll put the link in the description, but this is a black box Chinese light. It has good reviews and it was not expensive in terms of lights. So it was like the $80 range. We're gonna unbox the lights I bought and then do a comparison between the really terrible lights that I had and the new lights. And I wanted to show you the corals up close once they started looking better. But since I figured out I wanted to buy another light, I wanted to wait until the lights were on, then I can show you. Plus, a few days later, the coral should look a little bit more happy and they'll be a little easier to see since they'll be out. So let's unbox these lights. So this is the mounting hardware. It's really just a carabiner with some wires. So we're gonna hang this from another wire from the ceiling. These will clip onto the light. Here we have the power cable fingertip to just over my shoulder. That's about how long the cable is. This is just a standard like three pin cable. So I guess if you've got a longer one of these, this is a 10 amp cable it says, 18 gauge wire, maybe 14 gauge would be better for a longer one. Um, I don't see why you couldn't just use a different cable. Got the light, and the foam, which is good. 
Okay. Uh, something just moved around inside. I already opened the first one. I didn't notice it moving around. Right off the bat though, I mean, it looks fine. It looks nice. Why is that moving around in there? Uh, it looks like the... It looks like the power supplies or the inverters are just like... They're just like hanging around in there. Me? <laughs> it comes from China. 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 I don't know, that could be better, but it could have worse problems than that, I guess. Not bad. Not bad. Knobs? The knobs seem good. I don't, I don't know what the knobs should feel like. They feel like standard, like if you had a radio, how the knobs would feel on a radio, I guess. Within each LED light, each LED little divot, there's four chips. So I guess if there were one chip and it were to go out, you would be uh, missing a light. But with this, hopefully if one of these chips fails, um, you know, you still got three other ones. So that's at least good. In one of the review videos I watched, they said the fans were a little loud. And the first one that I opened and plugged in, they were not that loud. They were about as loud as a computer fan in like a laptop, which is not terrible. The only modification I would probably do to this light, there's a plug-in right here that you're able to daisy chain this light to another light so that you only have to plug in one cable. If I decide to do that, I won't really mess with this a whole lot. I might put some tape around because this is meant for like all plug types so there are some exposed bits when the plugs plugged in if i didn't use this i would put some tape over this to keep any salt any water from getting in here that would make me feel a little better about nothing falling in there and then on the other side we have the we have the power input and the light switch to turn on and off so i guess let's get these bad boys hung up so because i have a wood ceiling in this garage i'm just going to use some eye hooks and put them straight into the wood ceiling. I got this drill bit with some paper so that I can drill and uh, not drop any sawdust onto the top of the tank. And I have some wire to hang the light. We've got the light attached to the mounting hardware and then it comes with a carabiner. So then we will just hang the light from the wire that I made, put this right through the carabiner. That'll be the attachment point to go to the ceiling. I'm going to do basically the same thing as I did right here to the eye hook that's going to be in the ceiling. Since I got the height about where exactly where I wanted it, I'm going to finish this end and then I will make a second one to match the other side that's exactly the same length. I do wish that these cables were a little thicker. These clasps here to hold the wire on just, uh, they don't feel uh, extremely strong to me. Kinda wish those are a little stronger. I think that looks pretty good. I think I've got the height set to maybe six, seven inches. We'll see if that height's good enough. So right now, the original light and lights are still on. So I'm gonna plug both these lights in. We'll keep this light off and I'll turn on this light so we can compare before and after. So like to get power to this light, I'm gonna plug the cord in from right there. And ideally, it would reach down under the tank to my power outlet that I've got my lights currently connected to and it'll just go right in there. But that's about three and a half feet. That's gonna be so close. It's gonna turn my light too. I just temporarily ran really long extension cord to go another six inches. So, and then now I guess I've got to connect them together or I've got to plug that one in as well. And that's probably gonna look pretty ugly to have a cord hanging from between them. Well, it looks like this part's gonna be temporary too, because I don't think I want to see this cord. If I had a canopy, I could just attach them to the inside of the canopy, but I don't. I could build one. If you want to see it, let me know. All right, that's as good as it's gonna look for the moment. Cables are looking pretty nasty. Let's turn the lights off so we can see how this looks. Original lights. This light I had already messed with yesterday. This is where I think I'd leave it for the time being so they can adapt to the new lighting. You have the blue channel set to about three 
and the white channel set to like four. Let's go all the way off on both. We're gonna go white, it's white only. We'll go up to 100% for a second. That's 100% brightness against the other one. All right, so we're gonna go down on the white. Let's try the blue. It's about like half. I'm gonna go up to 100% on the blue. You can definitely see the hammer coral there. That's not coming through on camera, but you can see some pink polyps coming out of this one. All right, so let's dial this blue back to where I had it. Not bad. That's still with only one light on. I'm gonna unplug these old lights now so I can turn this one on. That does not look too terrible. I think the lights need to come more to the center, both of them, because it's leaving. Even though there's a gap in the rock structure in the middle, it's still got a quite a big dark area in the middle. So I think I'll bring those closer to the center. Clean up those cables, which don't look very good. But for $80 each, these lights look pretty good, I'd say. And you know, they're on maybe a third brightness right now. So I wish I could give you guys a par level of what these guys are able to put out, maybe six, seven inches off the surface of the water. Let's take a look at these corals. We've got a hammer right here. This guy was a bicolor. He had a he had blue tips and green. And right now he's only got green. Um, I didn't notice any blue after he opened back up. So I'm not sure what that's about. If it's just a stress thing, um, or if he will get that back. I have heard of certain corals and stuff that people buy. They do change colors from when they were originally purchased. So hopefully this guy does get his blue back. The colors in the fish are much more vibrant as well with these lights. And there we've got a blasto. If I can remember the specific names of these, I'll put them in the description or on screen, but I gotta be honest, I don't remember the exact names of each of these. Got a Zoa here, it's like a bow tie Zoa. Another one right there, this one's not completely opened up yet. We've got another, got a hard coral back there. I believe that is the bird's nest. And then we have another over here. I wanna say, is this a Pasolipora? I don't remember this one. This one was purple. Uh, when I had the blue lights up more, you could definitely see the, the pink and purple fluorescence on this guy. We've got a Cyphastria right here. I think it had a had pretty blue flesh, and then the polyps were like nice and pink. And then the last of the corals, we've got another Zoa. The anemone found a spot right in the crevice of this rock here. And since the lights are just coming on, he is hiding at the moment. I have a couple clips that I took on my phone of this guy when he's out more. And he stayed pretty much, I put him right there when we first got him in the tank and he's just moved. Um, I think after that first day, he moved right to this crevice right here. He's just been there ever since. So that about wraps up today's video. Thanks for coming along to the frag swap with me, acclimating these corals, getting them dipped, setting up these lights. I wanna thank you guys for over the last couple videos I've made, last few weeks, We've gone from about 120 subscribers to just under 500 right now. So I wanna thank you to everyone who's subscribed, everyone who's liked, commented on these videos. It really helps knowing what you guys are into. And leave a comment if you have suggestions for future videos. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one.